and we are live with Nelson Office Hours. Welcome everyone, GMGM. GM. We have a very special edition actually today of Nelson Office Hours. For those of, you, those of you who are not familiar with Office Hours, this is where we show off the latest and the greatest in Nelson and we drop the occasional alpha leak if you're lucky. Uh, we have, as I said, a special edition here today. We have two amazing guests with us. Firstly, we have Lorenzo, who is president of Pudgy Penguins. I think maybe that might be the coolest job title honor, the Pudgy <laughs> president himself. Uh, welcome. And we have Landon, uh, who is data analytics lead at Matter Labs, which is the company behind ZK Sync. Also a cool title. I don't know if it reaches the Pudgy president title <laughs> level, but I'll let you guys uh, introduce yourselves. Do you, Lorenzo, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. So I'm Lorenzo. I'm the president of Pudgy. It is a really cool title, uh, President Pudgy Penguins Triple P. Um, you know, I originally started as the CTO of Pudgy, and I purchased the project with Luca and team about two years ago. And it's been our mission to really kind of democratize IP and uh, you know bring real world value, you know, to the underlying blockchain assets that we have in our Pudgy Penguins. So we're building an IP company, which is really exciting, and we're building it with community. Amazing! Happy to have you on the stream, Lorenzo. So. Landon, do you want to give a quick intro as well of yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Landon. I do all things data and analytics at Matter Labs, uh, largely around all things happening on ZK Sync. Uh, so at Matter Labs, I generally sit within our business development team. So doing a lot of analysis on that front, but then kind of ecosystem analytics, uh, looking at Pudgy Penguin stuff with uh, Pudgy World. Uh, so all kinds of things like that. Uh, then also like spanning a little bit of product and a little bit of engineering insights occasionally. Uh, right now, I'm a one-man show, so take on a lot of stuff at Matter Labs, but it's exciting. And amazing. I am very jealous of the president at Pudgy Penguins. <laughs> battle, Triple P, <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah, so uh, amazing. Yeah, happy to have you both on the stream. So the uh, kind of the occasion we're celebrating here is basically, firstly, the fact that we've started uh, an integration of ZK Sync into Nelson which I'm super excited about. And we'll see at least the beginnings of that integration. And we'll look at some of the insights from that in a moment. We also have made a super cool Pudgy dashboard with CK Sync data as well, which we're going to take a look at and learn a bit more about what's happening on that front with Pudgy World, et cetera. So without further ado, as we like doing here in office hours, I think we can just dive right into Nelson and see what we have here. So for those of you not familiar with Nelson, you can go to app.nonson.ai to set up your own account and start playing around with it. Um, why don't we start with the ZK Sync dashboard? Uh, so we go to the chain section here. We go to ZK Sync. And I think of this as kind of the tip of the iceberg, right? When you're looking at a, at a new chain like ZK Sync, you want to understand how the growth uh, is going in that ecosystem. And you might also want to know what are the main applications and what we call entities that people are interacting with on ZK Sync. And so you see right away that actually it's pretty impressive usage in terms of active addresses. It's hovering close to half a million addresses that are daily active on ZK Sync, which is pretty cool. Maybe I could just start with kind of an overall question for you, Landon. Like, how, how how have you guys kind of managed to get to that level? Like, uh, are there any like growth initiatives, or yeah, how did you manage to get basically you know half a million people to to use your more than that, but on a daily basis, like half a million people to to use ZK Sync? Yeah, yeah, I, I think a big part of it is just kind of being around for a while, and like kind of having uh, existing users from like ZK Sync Lite from a few years ago, which is still live, but. Uh, kind of built up an initial user base then, and a lot of people that were using ZK Sync back then kind of naturally translated over to using ZK Sync era. Uh, but then also there's, you know, lots of people that are just, they're always trying out new projects, new ecosystems, new L2s especially. So definitely catch a lot of people from that. Um, yeah, one of the big okay. things that's always interesting to look at is like whenever you have like a little pocket of some type of different application do users come for that. Uh, so that's where I try to focus a lot more on like analysis now. But yeah, that's kind mm. of broadly how I think about users and what we're seeing. Makes sense. And for those who are less familiar with ZK Sync, you mentioned ZK Sync Lite and ZK Sync Era. Do you want to just explain kind of 
what's the difference and and you know i guess so here we're looking at ck6 era maybe you could just explain that for, for folks yes yes that's a good one i think a lot of people get it confused uh yeah zk sync light it used to be called zk sync v1 but it was essentially a nft and payments network so it it wasn't like a full smart contract complete network that you could just develop anything on there was zigzag as an exchange and you could do some trades there but it was very limited what people could do uh, but then zk sync era which was originally zk sync v2 is like what people know as L2s now, similar to Optimism, Arbitrum, you can develop anything on there in smart contracts. Uh, yeah, so ZK Sync era, people do generally just say ZK Sync. Uh, but yeah, that's really the flagship product in the ZK Sync brand. Makes sense. And you can also see a couple of other things. For example, you see a lot of transactions happening and you see the gas, uh, overall gas consumption uh, went down a lot, probably because of the EIP 4844, right? I, I don't know if that's something you, you guys were monitoring internally as well, that you saw gas uh, gas price basically come down quite a lot after that. Yeah, yeah, this is a big one and kind of the very exciting thing for really everybody in the role of space and Ethereum space. Uh, I think ZK Sync Air right now, it's hovering between like one cent and five cents for most transactions. Uh, the last few months before EIP 4844 is 20 cents or so. Uh, but then like last year, uh, before we had some improvements and stuff, sometimes fees were 50 cents or a dollar. And uh, for some mm. people, that's not a lot. But for others, like that's kind of a, a lot. So now it's really awesome to be around the like single cent mark. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think as a user as well, I remember when when L2 started coming to market and I think many of us had this idea that like it's going to be near free almost to make transactions. And then you see like, well, it's still like a dollar or so to make a transaction. And so I think with this latest change, it feels like ZK Sync and, and L2s in general are kind of starting to live up more to that promise of being able to have really fast and low gas transactions uh, on chain, which is super cool. Yeah. But um, hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say with base, like, Base has seen crazy activity lately. Base is very popular and just great network. I mean, Coinbase, how can you not like it? Uh, so with optimistic roles, fees are like sub cent, but then base mm. spiked because of some usage. But it, yeah, it's really showing you like where we can be. There's still, it's rough around the edges still on like maintaining low fees, but you, you do kind of see the future of like where we're going. Actually, do you also want to kind of explain high level um... You know what, what's kind of the difference between without getting too technical like what's the difference uh in in, in your words kind of between optimistic rollups and zk rollups what's kind of the, the benefit of zk versus optimistic yeah yeah i'll describe that i'm going to tie it into 4844 and fees so with zk rollups you're verifying that well you're verifying the validity of of every transaction so you have to take some computational action or proof against every transaction. Uh, so you have some overhead that isn't related to data for every transaction. For optimistic rollups, you are optimistic and assume that they're all valid. Uh, then you have watchers that essentially look for any invalid transactions. So with optimistic rollups, uh, after EIP 4844, their L1 data cost, post data to L1, is like near zero. They don't have any separate costs to verify proofs like ZK rolls do. So in relative terms between the two, optimistic rollups definitely saw a bigger improvement from 4844 in terms of decreasing fees. Because with ZK rollups, we have this relatively flat cost of proving that can't go away. Uh, we can do a lot of stuff to improve it, and we are, but it's always going to be there, and optimistic rolls don't have that. That's super clear. Thanks. Thanks for explaining that. And so here we have also the page of what we call entities. Maybe that term is a little bit abstract to some people, but what it refers to is if you're looking at on-chain data, you typically see addresses, right? And so if you would use something like Etherscan for Ethereum, you normally see addresses like 0x, ABC123. What we one of the things we do at Nelson is we basically try to attribute or associate the addresses to specific entities. So an entity could be a project, an exchange, um, it could be uh, a team, you know, this, 
or or in some cases individuals to like noteworthy individuals like Talek and and Justin Sun and so on. Uh, so here, this is kind of showing instead of just seeing here are the addresses that are doing the most activity, we roll it up to the entity level. And so one thing that stuck out to me, for example, was that USDC is actually uh, used a lot in, in ZK Sync. And I think in many other chains, um, Tether is actually more used than USDC. So I was just curious if you have any if you if you have any insights on kind of why why do you think USDC is used so much on ZK Sync? Is there is it that payment use case or like any other observations around USDC on ZK Sync? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first thing I could say is like mo in DeFi, most liquidity pairs are against USDC. Uh, but in terms of like transfers, I, I really don't have a great answer though. Because like I, on most chains, DeFi is paired against USDC. Some You have some USD pairs, USDT pairs, but mostly Circle. Uh, in terms of transfers being this high um I, I really don't have a great answer on that one that's that's okay but i guess we'll find out uh, later when we start digging deeper uh, with our integration so also just to take a step back for uh for for those of you um not as familiar with nonsense so when we integrate a new chain what we do first is to create this growth dashboard which gives you like i said the tip of the iceberg but later on, when we've integrated it more deeply into Nansen, you'll be able to look up specific entities like Circle, USDC, Tether, et cetera. And you can see insights across that entity. And you can also look at specific addresses. You can look at specific tokens and token god mode and so on and so forth. And we're going to be rolling this out for ZK Sync in the next weeks, which I'm super excited about. And maybe it'll, it'll be easier for us to actually figure out what the hell people are doing uh, with their USDC on, on ZK Sync once we've done that. Um, any other things here that kind of uh, stand out to you, uh, Landon, in terms of like entities, any projects you think are interesting or that people should be looking at? Uh, I, I don't see anything immediately here, but one other, I just wanted to highlight kind of what you said about labeling. Like everybody underestimates how important and valuable it is until they use something like Nansen. Like I've spent a lot of hours manually labeling, labeling contracts <laughs> and yeah. it, it's a big task. You guys know this, you've been doing it for years. And once you have a good foundation, it's incredible what you can see come out in the blockchain. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I couldn't agree more. It's uh, it sounds easy somehow, but it's actually incredibly time consuming and, and difficult and there's no silver bullet. So you just kind of have to eat a lot of lead bullets and figure out ways to, to label. Um, Cool. So that that's uh, that's super interesting. Maybe we can shift gears a little bit and move into the Pudgy dashboard as well and Luke uh, Lorenzo. So if you go to the projects tab, uh, there's this new dashboard here, ZK Saint um, X Pudgy Penguins Toys. If you click that, let me just uh, share this tab instead. It's going to open up a new tab, and this is a dashboard we built in on some query, which allows you to basically create your own dashboards, you know, using SQL and so on. And so we've been able to spin up a dashboard for ZK Sync and Pudgy. And so maybe before we start looking at the data itself, um, Lorenzo, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about the Pudgy Penguin toys and how it actually ties in with ZK Sync? Yeah, absolutely. So our Pudgy toy initiative, I think, is one that's breaking a lot of barriers in the space. Um, to give people some context, we launched our first toy line of 12 different or 13 different toys. Uh, all of those toys were actually licensed from community members, which is really exciting. So they're sharing in basically our mission and their toys are on shelves. And so we launched our toys in Walmart and many other really large retailers around the world. And so with each toy, you actually get a birth certificate. I don't have one around me, but it's this little card that has a QR code on it. And you can actually scan that QR code and basically sign up with your email. And from there you get a wallet on chain without you even knowing it, as well as your first NFTs to customize your penguin. And so the project originally started as just kind of that narrow scope. And ultimately we've kind of extended that scope into ultimately making it, you know, a game. And so later this year we'll go and, you know, show the world our, our Pudgy World game, which will be super exciting where you'll be able to hop in and, and play with friends. And it's something we teased actually at our Miami event last year. So really exciting product for us. Uh, something that will be rolling out in alpha, you know, probably by the fall at some point. And uh, I think it'll onboard a lot of people into the crypto space without them even knowing. And that's kind of been one of our core missions at Pudgy is like 
how do you get people to fall in love with the IP and the experiences rather than the underlying technology itself, uh, but enable them, you know, to participate in this ever growing ecosystem. Hundred percent. I think that's so inspiring, right? That you you are kind of one of the, I would say, one of the few projects that uh, are really reaching out beyond crypto Twitter and the crypto bubble. You're actually helping onboard lots of new people who, in many ways, have maybe no interest in blockchain or Web three, but through the toys, through the IP, they just fall into it uh, without almost without even knowing it. And it's pretty cool that you probably wouldn't have been able to do this two or three years ago because you didn't have the technology in terms of yeah. chains that could scale really well and have low fees. So I feel like it's kind of a match made in heaven to get Pudgy Penguins running on ZK Sync. Um, it really is. Uh, you know, originally hmm. we had thought about putting it just on ETH and like the fees were, were too high for us to take care of everything ourselves. And, uh, you know, especially, you know, we have a really large Instagram as well. We have a really large Giphy. So people are sharing the penguins. People are beginning to understand what the Pudgy Penguin is. And so, you know, with millions of people from those followings coming into Pudgy World at some point, uh, when that product is officially ready, you know, that's not something the company could sustain as a loss leader for just paying gas fees on behalf. But, you know, with the partnership with ZK Sync and obviously the low transaction costs, that's definitely doable for us. Super cool. We actually had a pudgy event at the Nelson headquarter uh, last night. So if I look a little bit tired, that, that's why we had about 100, 100 pudgy penguin holders uh, at the office, which is super fun. And we're actually doing an event with, with ZK Sync uh, next month. So, oh, so sweet. About doing that too. Uh, and, and I guess like from, from the dashboard itself, we can see that it's pretty amazing how much you expanded the uh, amount of, I guess, pudgy holders. I mean, they're, they're not owners of big pudgies or, or little pudgies as such, but they're, they're still stakeholders now in the pudgy economy, if you will, right? And and you basically around 10x the amount of people who, who have some kind of pudgy assets on chain, right? If you look at, um, you know, the the standard pudgy penguin uh, NFTs, it's about, I think, 4,500 holders. And yep. here, you're basically close to 60,000 uh, wallets that have been created through these toys. So it's, I, I think you can see very clearly that you managed to expand the whole um, ecosystem of Pudgy Penguins through these toys, which, which is really cool. I don't know how you feel like looking at the charts, like that must be pretty inspiring for you. It is pretty inspiring. I think we've learned a lot as well on, on the product side of things about how we optimize that flow and bring people in more, but to have you know a growing community is awesome. You know, I, we look yeah. at our community in a couple different segments. There's, you know, people that interact with our content. And so, you know, those are people on Instagram and on Giphy. You know, there's obviously our core holder base, which I think crypto knows very well with, you know, our bigs and our littles and even our ROG holders. And then this is kind of a new category for us, which is, you know, people that are interested in what we're doing, interested in those experiences. They are community members to us. We want to expand that ecosystem. Um, but you know they're not super crypto native, and I think that's the most exciting point. Yeah. Also, I want to call out. I mentioned this uh, <laughs> separately. This is the first time I've seen Christmas on chain. So th <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Like this spike here, right? You can basically yes. kind of tell a story here of people, probably people like getting out and actually buying the toys for their friends and family, like a few days before Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Like December 20, you see a lot of addresses coming in. Maybe, you know, they buy it for their friends, but they also buy one for themselves. And so yeah. they, they open it up and they activate it. And then it literally peaks on Christmas Day when people are like unwrapping the pudgies that are under the Christmas tree, which uh, which I find like pretty wholesome. That's a that's a kind of kind of a cool idea. First time we're seeing Christmas on chain, which is pretty yeah. amazing. Really amazing, um, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. I also bought a bunch of pudgy toys for my nieces and nephews and, and my daughter. So, uh, for family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. so we are, we are basically like, yeah, we're included in this chart here, which is awesome. Um, I also noticed a few other things like you can actually see that, uh, there are, few, there are quite a, quite a lot of ETH that's been bridged, uh, by pudgy penguin, penguin holders over to ZK sync. Yeah. And so I think from that perspective, it's also pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see how Pudgy Penguins as a community can be uh, value adding to the CKC ecosystem, um, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know, Landon, if you guys have, have thought about that internally as well. How 
how um, this adds value to ZK Sync beyond kind of the fact that we can make a big announcement. You could actually see like liquidity and activity coming in through Pudgy Penguins into ZK Sync. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in blockchain, in the blockchain space right now, it's kind of DeFi everywhere, yeah. and it's so hard to differentiate. And then you get something awesome like Pudgy, and boom, you're a part of like one of the most fun communities. Like the Giphy stuff. I have my friends who aren't in crypto sending Pudgy Giphys. It's it's a great community to be to be a part of, and you get something like that, and then you have great things like that on zk sync. So yeah, it's great way to kind of build a community. Yeah, community is you know a really powerful tool. It's something that we've you know really tried to foster since the beginning, and you know we do in our igloos every two weeks with the community. Actually, a lot of the ideas in the Pudgy World product actually came from community and came from those inner igloos. And you know, when you're able to galvanize that power, you, I think you see some pretty amazing statistics. You know, for example, our Walmart tweet was, I believe, the second most liked tweet on for Walmart ever, just under like a Taylor Swift tweet. Um, you know, obviously, you're wow. seeing you know 10,000 ETH bridge to zk sync because of the partnership that we've got. Um, I think you see other chains starting to give Pudgy's airdrops and that sort of things because of the power of that community and because of that marketing machine that can activate, which is super exciting. So, you know, when these NFT communities come together with these chains that are doing really amazing things, I think you get something super special. Sure. That's that's awesome. Okay. I wanna also show a couple of new things on the nonsense front in addition to this. So maybe we go back here to the uh, Nonsen NFT God mode. Um, so uh, I want to just show a couple of things that we've updated. And of course, we'll use Pudgy Penguins as the example to look at. So um, for those not aware, uh, we have been working on a migration from Nonsen 1 to Nonsen 2. And uh, in that process, we also tried to simplify and use kind of the Maria Kondo method to throw out throw out stuff that doesn't spark joy. And I, I feel like we've cleaned up the NFT God mode view quite significantly. And we've basically made the whole uh, dashboard much higher signal than it used to be. And so I'll just kind of give you a quick tour of some of the new stuff that you can see in NFT God mode now, specifically using Pudgy Penguins as the example. So firstly, when you open up um, NFT God mode, Everything up here now, I feel, is actually extremely helpful in terms of understanding what's happening with the, the project. So you can see the price movement over time. You can also toggle it to get different uh, price perspective. You can also switch off some of these. If I only want to look at the floor price or if I only want to look at the average trading price, I can do that. But then one question that people often have when they see either price going up or going down is, why is it going up? So who actually bought you know, and who sold? And so you can now toggle this on a 24 hour view here and it sort of aggregates it. So here's someone who sold five pudgies, which is a, is a terrible decision that I would never do. I don't know what, what they're thinking. Uh, here's uh, someone who's been buying 22 NFTs uh, in the last week, which is pretty cool. And then we can actually drill down and look at that specific NFT holder in a moment. Uh, in fact, I'll get back to that in a sec. You can also see recent trades that are coming in here. Um, you can see, of course, some of the charts that people know from before, like recent transactions, how many transactions and buyers you have. And then we've simplified the other tabs. We used to have like 10 different tabs, but we found that it's actually easier to just have two separate tabs, one that is focused on the owners. So who are the people actually owning Pudgy Penguins? Uh, and you can look at the total balance. Think of this as like a cap table. You can also flip it around and look at changes. So who's been scooping up uh, more over different time periods? Let's look at 90 days, for example. You can see where the pudgies have it going. This is pretty helpful, uh, pretty convenient. And you can also see when they first bought their pudgies. And you can toggle to get the view of the date or you know how long it was ago. And then this is a bit of an alpha leak, in my opinion. We have this item section, and it's it's a funny title, best items. Basically what it does is we have an AI model that is trained on all of the transactions of Pudgy Penguins. And it does this for, I think, 10,000 other collections too. It trains on which traits are the most valuable and then gives an overall estimate, a bit of like Zillow in the US, right? You have like the Zestimate or whatever it's called. 
uh, and you estimate how much uh, this Pudgy is uh, worth. And then you have the listing price. So this one is currently listed on Blur. And then you just compare it and you say, actually, let's sort these by the most undervalued uh, Pudgies. And so I've done this in the past where I've basically, when people ask me, you know, which uh, I want to buy a Pudgy, which one should I buy? I would literally use this method and just look at what the AI model says, compare it to the listing price, and then give them the most undervalued Pudgies. And I say, I think you should buy this one. And so now we've made that a lot easier for you. You can just go to items. It's by default sorted by the AI value gap. Maybe we need to come up with a better name for that, but it's the, that, the gap between the AI price and the listing price. And so this is a pretty cool way to discover potentially undervalued uh, penguins. Also down here, for those of you who are a bit more technical, maybe you, you also get an error estimate uh, of how accurate the model has been historically. So for Pudgy, we actually have a pretty high confidence in the model. It's around 4.5% error if you compare the estimates to the actual transaction prices later. And um, so that's where we're at. Um, can you guys still hear me? My uh, headphones went a little bit yeah. off there. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. I, I think that's, that's an cool. awesome picture. I know uh, there's a lot of culture in our community around like which head trait you might have or which specific trait. And so like uh, to see that Nansen is able to capture some of that, I think is really awesome. You know, bulls versus wizards or toughs, uh, whatever it might be. So absolutely love that feature. Awesome. Uh, Landon, are you guys looking at NFTs as well on ZK Sync? Is that kind of a big uh, focus area for you or? Yeah, we're definitely trying to get it going more. Uh, I'll call it pretty nascent as of now. A few collections popping up, uh, definitely some like native collections that have been around since early mainnet launch. Uh, yeah, definitely trying to grow it. I mean, NFTs, as we've already said, NFTs are best way or like one of the best ways to grow communities. Uh, can't yeah. really stack up to Pudgy for at least a long, <laughs> long time with anything, but Pudgy's on ZK Sync, so we're there. Amazing. Cool. I promised you guys I would take a quick look at uh, this legendary NFT collector who has been scooping up 22 NFTs. So just to go back to that, and you can drill down and actually look at you know what are what are they doing on the NFT front. And um, if we scroll down here, you can actually see individual transactions. And one thing that's kind of interesting is that the, this NFT collector. They scooped up 22 pudges in the last week, and they've been selling a bunch of board apes. Um, you know, not to dunk on board apes; it's a fine collection. But I found it interesting that they have been selling so many board apes, and uh, frankly, they have been selling a couple bunch of pudges too. But they bought more than they've sold. And so, if you just scroll through here, you can see all of the transactions that they've been making. A lot of the, a lot of blur buys, and it looks like they've been buying some board apes too. Frankly, so maybe there's a bit of flipping going on there. Maybe they're, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah, go for it. Maybe they're a farmer or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be actually. They might be farming like blur tokens or something like that. But yeah, so th this is this is an example of where you can kind of start at the top. You see the price. You see well, who's actually been buying like the what's why is the price going up? You see a specific wallet that's been buying many. You drill down to the wallet itself, and you get uh, an overview of uh, or an understanding of what this particular market participant is doing. And you know, I'm excited to to point out that we're soon going to have this type of functionality available for CK Sync as well. So you can dig super deep into what's happening on CK Sync. All right. Uh, I I'm gonna leak one uh, little uh, alpha piece here um, for the viewers. Um, a prospect team I wouldn't do this, but we had this event yesterday um, with Pudgy folks uh, at the office, and we gave them a discount code for Nelson, which is Pudgy10, that is Pudgy in capital letters, one, zero. That's going to be uh, active until, I think, midnight our time uh, tonight. So I think that's another 14-ish hours or so, 16 hours uh, in that range. So if people are interested in scooping up uh, an annual Pioneer subscription with Nelson, you can use that disc code uh, in the next 15, 16 hours uh, or so. So that's the that's the alpha leak in terms of getting started with Nansen. Cool. Any any uh, final words from you guys? What uh, I guess Lorenzo, what, what what's uh, 
what's uh, something that people can do to get more engaged with the Pudgy Penguin community besides uh, aping into the collection itself? I'd say uh, go check out our Instagram. You know, it's growing really quickly. Uh, lots of really great relatable content on that side of things. And uh, send your family pudgy gifts. Always, always a bonus to spread the pudgy penguins vision through gifts and uh, cute toys. Amazing. Landon, uh, what's the best way for people to get started with ZK Sync? Uh, yeah, uh, Twitter is our main channel. So uh, ZK Sync is the account there. But then also our website will have, I think that's zksync.io. There's Lots of stuff there on the ecosystem, bridge, and how to kind of get involved. Amazing. Awesome. Thank you both for joining. This has been super fun. I look forward to diving deeper into the ZK Sync ecosystem and, of course, continuing my adventures with the Pudgy Penguins community. So have a good one, both of you. Thanks for joining. And see you all at home. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks.